We have talked about in general what happened in consolidation when the parent has less than 100% ownership of the subsidiary. Now let's specifically look at what happened on the parent book and what happened in the consolidation process. So first of all, on the parent book, let's first talk about the equity method. We are going to talk about the other methods later. So if the parent has been using the equity method, uh, if you still remember, if the parent has 100% ownership of the subsidiary, the equity subsidiary earn earnings will be the current period income minus current period amortization. And here, the only difference, if the parent has less than 100% ownership of the subsidiary, the only difference here is we need to multiply it by the percentage of ownership. That is the only difference. And it is very similar to the investment account. The initial investment is always 109. It is not 100%, but that is just the initial investment. Uh, no matter how much investment the parent is putting in, it should be all be recognized in the investment account. And then all of the subsequent income by the subsidiary, all subsequent dividend by the subsidiary, and all of the subsequent amortization, because subsidiary is not owned 100% by the parent now, so we need to multiply it by the percentage of ownership. So uh, the key differences here between what we are talking about now and what uh, we talked about before, it is only a difference in whether you multiply the percentage of ownership or not. So uh, let's look at an example. If you go on island, you should see an example posted on island. So that is class three, a class six handout. And then please first uh, take a look at the blank handout. Uh, spend maybe 10 minutes, try to work on it on your own and you can pause your video for now. So uh, let's look at this problem. Assume King Company acquires 80% of Pound Company's 100,000 outstanding voting stock on January 1st, 2014 for 9.75 per share. So it's a total of 780,000 cash. Shares are trading at an average of 9.75 per share before and after the acquisition. The total value of pound to be used initially in consolidation is consideration transferred, 780,000. So this represents 80% ownership of the stock, right? And another 20% ownership. So non controlling interest, what is the fair value of the other 20% ownership? So we know that each share is 9.75, was 9.75, that is the fair value of the share. And uh, non controlling interest has 20% of 100,000 outstanding stocks. So that would give you 195,000. So uh, Pound's total fair value is, if you add up those two, that will give you the 100% is 975,000. The fair value allocation schedule is as follows. So 100% fair value allocation, acquisition date book value is 740,000. So the difference, the excess payment, based on the 100%, the excess payment is 235,000. And this excess payment comes from uh, one, two, three, four sources. So all of those are identified here. And, but after taking out those four sources, there are still 25,000 uh, excess payments that we cannot identify, and we allocate all of them to goodwill. So for the ones we can identify, trademark has indefinite use for life, so it is not amortized. Amortization. Patented technology has 20 years use for life. 
the difference between fair and book value is 120,000. So for each year, the amortization is 6,000. Equipment has 10 years use for life and it is overvalued on the firm's book by 10,000. So each year, the amortization is negative 1,000. Not of liability has eight years use for life. Uh, so each year, the amortization is 5,000. So the total yearly amortization is 10,000 per year. And then we also know can use equity message uh, and report the, the subsidiary report the following change in return earning. And then uh, in the year 2014, the increase in return earning is 70,000. So why would return earning increase? It is basically the difference between net income and dividend. And in the year 2015, Net income is 90,000, dividend is 50,000. So increasing return earning is 40,000. So, and then uh, let's look at the parent book, the King Firm's book in the end of 2015. So uh, the first blank here is equity subsidiary earnings. So here, because King is using the equity method, under the equity method, Equity in subsidiary earnings is basically subsidiary's current year income, which is 90,000 minus 10,000 amortization. And because King has 80% of the subsidiary, so we multiply it by 80%. So that gives you 64,000. So equity in subsidiary earnings is 64,000. And if you add them up, that will give you 400,000. And this 400,000 is carried over to a statement of return earning. If you add up everything on the statement of return earning, that will give you 1.2 million. And then you carry over the any balance for return earning to your balance sheet. On the balance sheet, the only thing you need to really calculate is the investment account. Under the equity method, uh, the firm's investment account balance is the initial investment, which is 780,000, plus the subsequent income, minus the subsequent, all of the subsequent dividends, and then minus all of the subsequent amortization. So we have two years, 2014 and 2015. For the 20, uh, 20, 2015 change in return earning, which is income minus dividend is 40,000. And 2014 change in return earning, which is net income minus dividend in 2014 is 70,000. And then we minus two years amortization. And then don't forget to take 80% of that because the parent only has 80% ownership in the sub. So that will give you 852,000. 852,000. And if you add up everything on the firm's balance sheet, oh, sorry, if you add up everything on the firm's asset side, That give you that will give you the firm's total asset of three point one five two million. If you add up everything in the liability side, that will give you three point one five two million as well. So those two numbers should equal. Uh, they are equal here, which means that um, it's right. So this is what happens on the parents' book.